joining us from Leicester to discuss is the Shadow Health Secretary, John Ashworth. Uh, very good morning to you, Mr Ashworth. Good morning. Um, the last time we spoke, I was perhaps slightly cheeky. I asked you what Labour's position on Brexit <laughs> was uh, that week. I I've learnt my lesson. We won't be doing that anymore. But I, I want to deal with the, the question okay. of uh, no, no deal Brexit. Um, Emily Thornberry has today reiterated comments she made on this show last week that we appear to be heading uh, for a no-deal Brexit. The Labour Party has made it pretty clear uh, that if they had the opportunity, uh, they would vote against any no-deal. Why is that? Because we don't think a so-called no-deal, where we simply crash out of the EU and therefore have to adopt all the World Trade Organisation tariff regimes, is in the interests of British business, in the interests of uh, British farming. We've got to export uh, to the EU and imposing some of the very high tariffs that we'd inevitably have to adopt, we d don't think is in our interest. So that's why we have, we have spoken out against um, a no deal. Actually, the government have said in the House of Commons that their no deal posture is a negotiating tactic completely undermining uh, it's their ability to, to negotiate, to use it as a tactic. It just shows you how hapless the government's approach is to Brexit. Uh, but no deal doesn't necessarily mean no agreement whatsoever. I mean, it could also look like agreement on the exit bill, you know, an answer to, to the Northern Ireland border question, you know, agreement on, on EU nationals. It could essentially be agreement on everything uh, apart from trade. I mean, if that were the case, what's the problem with going to WTO rules? Well, I mean, if there are agreements on all those other things, then, there's a, then there is a deal of sorts. But we would obviously have to study the details of that, which is why we're, we are saying that Parliament has to have the final say. I do think it's rather ironic that we have the very sort of uh, rabid Brexiteers on the Tory side saying, just get on with it. Uh, I thought Brexit was all about bringing sovereignty back to Parliament. So we believe in those, those sets of circumstances, Parliament would have to say. But obviously, we'd have to study very carefully the details of all that before we come to a final decision. Uh, what you just mentioned there, Parliament having the final say, I mean, essentially confirms that a line that the Labour Party has been putting out for quite some time. So we, we now understand the Labour position to be you will vote against uh, any no-deal Brexit. You could also vote against what you see as, as a bad Brexit. Why is that? Because a bad Brexit is not in the, is not in the national interest. Why should we support a Brexit uh, uh, deal, which means that hard-working families here in my Leicester constituency and across the country are worse off. We're in the business of improving the prosperity of families, not making families worse off. And if the outcome of this government's negotiations is a deal which, which means the British economy suffers, that's not something we're going to accept. We want to strengthen the British economy. You know, a strong economy means, means we can invest in public services like our NHS and our schools. So that's why we want a strong economy. We don't want Brexit to weaken our economy. And if that's what Theresa May comes up with, then I've got to say that's not going to be in the, in, in the national interest. But there will be plenty of people listening to what you've just said uh, this morning, Mr Ashworth, who, who, who see it as something of, a, of an abrogation of the democratic responsibility. I mean, where in that question that was posed to the British people back in June 2016, was there any mention of this, that the UK should leave the EU only if Sir Keir Starmer thinks it's a good deal? It was a simple question about being in or being out. The rest of the responsibility was handed to the government. Well, there's been a national poll of the country since that referendum. We had a general election campaign. I know the Tories don't like to be reminded of that general election campaign now. And all of us, in our personal manifestos when we stood for election, said we would uh, oppose any deal which was not in the national interest. So we have had a democratic vote on that position since the referendum. Well, here's the thing. So Labour is saying that it will vote down a, a, a no-deal Brexit. You'll vote down anything that you believe to be a bad deal. Now, if you, if you won't accept either of those options, there, there, there is one that remains, you know, staying in the European Union. No, 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 no. The reason we are involved in politics, the reason why we put ourselves forward for elected office is because we're optimists. We, de we believe that, you know, change is possible. I'm perfectly confident that we can get a good deal. We can get a deal which is in the interests of, uh, of, of British families and British business and the, and the British economy. I'm just very, very uh, uh, pessimistic that this, this Prime Minister, who is in, it's in, excruciating watching her premiership, it really is being ripped apart, isn't it? And we're just very pessimistic that she can get a deal in the national interest. 
but we're in politics because we think getting good for our constituents and getting and, and strengthening our economy is possible. So I don't think it's an either or. I don't think I don't think it's a I, I don't think it's a bad deal or stay in. I think we can get a good deal. Yeah, but every week since we, we, we've spoken, there has been a revision, a softening, a, a, a further detail as to you know, Labour's position on Brexit. I mean, how must, long must we wait before Labour actually starts being honest and talks about what a number of people on your back benches are talking about, but not the front bench, a second referendum? We're entirely honest. We're entirely honest. We've outlined our position. We think, for example, there should be some transitional arrangements. Interestingly, that we said that, and then a few weeks later, Theresa May... Uh, copied us in her Florence speech and said it as well. So I think actually we're leading the debate, we're leading the argument on these matters and we're being entirely honest with the British people. We accept that the referendum uh, uh, came to a conclusion that we should leave the European Union. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't try and get the very best deal for, for the British economy. I don't think the two positions are contradictory. Uh, as with Brexit, um, the Labour Party doesn't disagree in principle with, with universal credit. Can you outline... Uh, why, in that opposition de uh, debate, you were, you were calling for a pause? Because we, the rollout of it is, is not very satisfactory, is it? I mean, people have to wait six weeks. We, all of us in our uh, constituencies are getting examples from various uh, advice bureaus and food banks and so on of, of, the, uh, of the impact that universal credit is going to have on people. We know that people have, there's many part, examples across the country of people being evicted, of people going into huge rent arrears, and it's causing real hardship. Now, when universal credit was first announced by Ian Duncan Smith, we, did, we agreed with the principle and, and still do agree with the principle. But since then, there's been cuts to the different elements of universal credit, which means it's actually going to plunge people uh, into poverty. Poverty is going to increase under universal credit. And one of the big selling points of universal credit when Ian Duncan Smith unveiled it, he said that it was going to be a great anti-poverty initiative. So there's been lots of cuts and changes to the design of universal credit over the last few years, which we think is really going to hurt our constituents, which is why we brought that motion to the House of Commons the Tories didn't have the courage of the convictions. They vanished. They scarpered. Which, by the way, if our constituents didn't turn up to the job centre, they'd be sanctioned for it. And it really was quite extraordinary. And I must say this. When we had Opposition Day motions under a Labour government, I remember we lost one on Gurkhas. Damien Green, who is now the Deputy Prime Minister, effectively, stood up in the House of Commons and said the, house, the, the will of the House was clear. He was making a big fuss about the opposition beating the government in that Opposition Day motion. And now, 10 years down the line, Tory MPs cannot be even be bothered to vote on these motions. It's really quite disgraceful. Mr Ashworth, we're, we're <coughs> heading into winter, traditionally the most difficult time for the NHS. I mean, how confident are you in the service's ability to cope? Sadly, I'm not very confident at all. We're now in a situation where every single target in the hospital sector and the ambulance sector is being missed. And you've got to remember that these are targets which have been weakened under the Tory government. They were much tougher targets under a Labour government and we used to meet them. I mean, the NHS is going through the biggest financial squeeze in its history. Indeed, on the current figures, next year, head for head across England, the money will actually be falling. It'll actually be cut. So what I'm saying is, ahead of the budget, you know, put extra money into the NHS. And th deal with the that, huge that extra money, presumably in, in addition the to the extra money that you want to see, you know, to, to, to increase uh, public sector pay, particularly you know, in, in your brief in, in the health service. Well, indeed, they cannot, they cannot find uh, the money for the public sector pay increase from existing NHS budgets. If they do that, that will be incredibly unfair and it will mean wider cuts across the NHS. But they've also got to deal with the social care crisis. We're bringing a motion to the House of Commons this week on social care, calling on the government to reverse the cuts to social care, put the money into social care that is needed. At the moment, the government are saying they're going to cut social care budgets that they give to local authorities, when actually, because the local authorities have been unable to deal with some of what they call in the system delayed discharges of care. It's basically un unable to cope with getting people the social care packages they need on time. We think cutting local authority budgets, penalising them for that, is no way to solve the social care crisis. So we're calling on the government this week in the House of Commons to deal with social care. Mr. Of course, Ashworth. we'll wait and see if the Tory MPs actually bother to turn up to that as well. But, you know, a head Ashworth, of the budget, so, they've got to I'm put in so, place so a so sorry, we, we are going to have to leave it there. We are literally okay. just out of time. Many thanks for being with us.